Ethan, how are you? Good, very good. How, are you? how about yourself? Not too bad, thanks. It's uh, it's good to speak to you guys finally, I must admit. Um, this seems to be the album that uh, finally uh, realized uh, a true commercial potential. Would you agree? Well, it, it's uh, so far it's doing pretty good, I guess, yeah. Uh-huh. Does it does it surprise you that it happened really with I mean, as much as there there was a claim with the last three, this seems to be the one that has truly sort of broken through for you. Well, I guess on the one hand, it, it it's a it's a nice surprise. Yes, it is. I mean, you you always you always hope that um that people are going to like it and and receive it well. So it it's a very nice surprise. Yes. Mm-hmm. But did did you anticipate uh, you know this kind of uh, this kind of a welcome? Um, me personally, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe so, um, I don't think so. <laughs> I'm, I'm very pleasantly surprised. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, it's, um, as I say, in- interesting for um, a territory like South Africa, which is uh, probably one of your your newest uh, fans, uh, just based on the fact that uh, the previous albums um, haven't been available here, but now, thanks to V2, um, you know, uh, uh, Desertus songs is now um, available here, which is great. So it's very much a, um, you know, Mercury River, very much a, a new thing here in South Africa. But uh, the history of the band goes back some ten years. Yes, that's true. Mm-hmm. But now, as I say, in in that period, um, uh, if you have to look at uh, uh, Desertus songs and say the the previous uh, uh, albums and EPs that came before it, is is this album? Uh, much removed from from the last albums, or is it pretty much just a a, a, a continuation? I think it's a continuation. I think one of the things that makes it different. I mean, there's sort of like this uh, plate tectonics that's been happening, where uh, people have been shifting and whatnot, and uh, so there were some there were some shifts happening, you know, with the people who were working on the record, and. Uh, so it distinguishes itself from, you know, the record previously that way. And also everybody's just, um, you know, getting a little um, more defined in their own heads, less ambiguous about the kind of music we want want to make. And, I mean, at, at, a, at the point that you are now, um, was, was this that, you know, is this what you had envisaged to create with the band? Um, obviously after having initially created the band on a whim. Um, gosh, it's, it's hard for me to say. Um, I've been with the band myself four years. So so I wasn't uh, with the band at the very inception of the band. I was doing sort of parallel things myself. Um, but from what I can tell, it's not as much of a surprise as you'd think. Um, because I think a lot of the spontaneity at one point was kind of um, kind of like a bookmark, you know, stuff that people wanted to be there but just weren't sure had to had to put there yet. So I think there there've been a lot of these ideas floating around for a while. It's just that uh, people are getting better at expressing at expressing what what a uh, what you know might have been dreamed about expressing five years ago. Say mm-hmm. now um, the the process obviously with. Uh, with there being uh, six people uh, musically on this new album, um, is it is it is it sort of a pooled effort? Do you you know does everybody contribute or um, or do you just uh, you know is it a thing, is it a case of somebody writes your uh, will write the, the lyrics and somebody else will will do the you know the fills and the bits in between? Oh, it's it's definitely a combined effort. You never know who's going to going to do what. I mean, um, you know, in, in some cases, uh, some of the songs might have been co-written, and uh, some of the songs might have been come up, come, you know, one person might come up with one song, or another person might come up with the other song. Uh, Jonathan, our singer, of course, uh, wrote almost all the lyrics because he's, you know, doing the singing, so that makes sense. Um, but uh, even even the songs uh, that one person might initially write. You know, by the time they're embellished upon by other people, have become a group experience. I think because um, just as I say, my my personal um, interpretation is that uh, Mercury Rivers is is not 
is not truly a com you know well isn't a truly a commercial act because it's not it's it, it's it's the kind of music that you that you have to explore that you have to discover that um, doesn't come to you from one listen it it comes from sort of you know a, a, a discovery of of the album over a period of you know a couple of listens would you would you agree with that well, I think that's very nice of you to say because I think that was our intention uh, because we you know we want to we want to make music that people you know will want to listen to again and also will will find more stuff in so that's very nice of you to say no, right because as I say that I think the, the the best way of sort of summing it up is that it's, it's it's almost got a fourth dimension to it whereas I mean even even with the single um, you know which is currently um, uh, being playlisted here at the moment uh, goddess on a highway and um, that's <coughs> probably uh, to me the most um, commercially accessible track in the sense that right. it would go it would go right across the board but then um, you go into the album perhaps expecting that and that's not quite what you get but you're not disappointed <laughs> <laughs> well to tell you the truth when we first um, made the album we weren't sure what the first single would be so so a single is not always representative I mean I mean, we knew what the first song was going to be, so in a way, we, uh, in our own minds, were introducing the whole album, you know, with the first song, but we sort of knew that at some point um, something was going to shake that up a bit when the single was decided upon, and so it just happened to be that one. You know, there might be other singles uh, coming that easily could have been the first um, single, so, I mean, the single is a funny way to enter an album. It's not really through the front door it's just sort of this commercial side door sure. um, but you know hope, hopefully you know hopefully the the song matches you know the rest of the album enough that uh, that, that people would would uh, find the whole thing enjoyable mm -hmm. and uh, your relationship now with V2 this is this is the first album to come through V2 is that right yeah that's true mm -hmm. and was was that done um, who approached who or was it a case of you wanted to get uh, get your music out to you know an even wider audience to the point that you know church you like South Africa has now got access to your music whereas <laughs> before we you know we we could get it by you know uh, by the states but we didn't have a, a channel here I think one of the, the the wonderful things about v2 is um, I don't even know if access was the first idea I think we we saw that this was a label that was into what we were doing and um, was into giving us musical freedom. And, you know, the fact that uh, we're getting more exposure this way is icing on the cake, really. But, you know, what what makes this a very good label is, is the people here. They're great people. And uh, the uh, the artistic freedom, basically. Mm -hmm. Now, as I say, not to get into the into the horrible trap of sort of summing your, your music up in a nutshell, um, but, but where would you say your music belongs obviously it, it should be uh, certainly on the charts but it's uh, it's it's not like anything really that is out there at the moment it's almost as if Mercury River setting a whole new um, genre unto themselves I mean you you, you can hear um, you know if one had to make similarities that there, there are one or two some, uh, that, that you would probably come close to but Still, um, the sound that you have is is, is quite unique. Um, yeah, I mean, certainly, I mean, certainly, it's not unique in all of history because it borrows freely from from things. I think, you know, and this has been said in the newspapers before, is that we just borrow from older sources. In some cases, you know, we're just uh, we're not just borrowing from the seventies or the eighties or whatever. We're borrowing from the 50s and the 30s. I mean, so, I, I mean, I don't think any of us think that it's completely, I mean, the combination might be unique, but, um, but really it's, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of stuff, obviously, that we're, we're building on uh, older music that we respect. Would, is it representative of the, you know, of the personalities that make up the band? I think definitely so. I think, um, I, th I think you would, you know, if if, if you, I, I couldn't like make a whole chart for you right now, but I, I think if you really started to look at it and hung out with us all, you'd start to understand, oh, this came from there, this came from there. But, uh, 
but our tastes kind of match in many places, so it's so it's uh, helpful that way. And also, even when they don't, we always respect the other one, and we're always eager to uh, listen to the other guys' um, ideas and points of view and whatnot. Right. And the and the, I mean the you know you've you've been so well received, um, especially in the UK, and I think um, also to an extent across Europe. Um, was, was that a, a, a little bit of a surprise? Because I mean, you know, the, the English are, are known for being, you know, particularly fickle and very much uh, drawn to their own. Um, yeah. Before they'll look, you know, across the waters to, you know. Sure. Things. Yeah, it's a very pleasant surprise. Mm. Mm, you know, I, I think it's just great. Mm. I'm, I'm very I'm very happy that uh, that people like it. Not just you know in terms of success and whatnot, but you know we set out to get people listening to music and if. If uh, people are responding that way, that means they're listening. So, so yeah, we take that as a good thing. Mm, absolutely, I think I think Mercury are ever going to be responsible for. Um, it's almost uh, it. It goes to show, I think, because yeah, I think one has a um, an impression that your you know that the buying public um, is very you know um, they you know they they go for things that are, are easy on the ear, uh, things that aren't too difficult or you know. Uh, take a bit of a challenge, whereas um, this album, um, with all its, uh, you know, with, with everything that it has to offer, is embracing an incredibly big audience, which I think is fantastic, which goes to show that obviously the your listening public is, is growing with you, which is which is good. Well, that's, yeah, that would be great. What I, what I, what I like the idea of, uh, ge- you know, intergenerational too, that would be just fine, because um, obviously I played it for my whole family. Because you know, my family is you know involved in my life and what I do and whatnot, and uh, my parents like it. My grandfather likes it. Most of it, just parts of it, he doesn't like, but he likes most of it, which I think is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. And my little niece, who's a baby, responds musically to it as well. So, as far as I'm concerned, you know, widening the audience, it would be nice if it not just meaning like more young people in different countries, but just like it'd be nice if you know just more people. If, Different walks of life just responded to it as music. I think that would be great. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, you started the new year uh, with a bang. I mean, you, your album was seen as uh, the number one album for the year uh, by NME. Um, how, yeah, that's, that's nice. How, how are you going to top that? <laughs> well, I mean, that's that's you know that's not the goal we set out to do. No, sure. Was get number one. So I think that the best way we can top ourselves is to um, top ourselves musically, you know, to just keep, keep being, you know, try to be true to ourselves musically. And, you know, you know, the next album, you know, it might not be as well received, but if we feel that we've topped it musically, that, that would be the challenge. I mean, topping is kind of an odd word. It's, um, I can see, I can see where it's coming from, but yeah, it's just about kind of like staying the course and trying to, you know, experiment according to our own likings, and, uh, you know, if people keep liking it, that's just great. Sure. Is it, is it difficult to sort of stay true to what you're doing? You know, I mean, obviously, as your profile grows and, um, you know, as your fan base grows, you, I'm sure you become painfully aware of, you know, the numbers of people that are out there, you know, embracing what you're doing. Um, you know, does, th- does that affect you, you know, in a positive way? I, I per- uh, personally um, just assume that uh, I, I'm kind of in denial, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I, I understand that more people have heard about the band, but I just, you know, when I walk around, I just assume that nobody would recognize me. And for the most part, I, I think that's true. Nobody would. So uh, I just kind of forget about it. I'm just still doing the same thing I was doing a year ago. But it sure is nice when you pull into town and there's people in the audience who really, you know, respond. So I... You know, as far as I'm con- concerned, uh, That's good. yeah, I just, I just kind of keep keep doing the same thing. Well, I mean, if anything, they're embracing the music, not the, uh, not the image, um, or the personality. Yeah, that's 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 a good point. I'm, yeah, I'm glad. You, yeah, not not so much us, but the music. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, if I could ask you one last favor, if I may, because I know our time. Yeah, sure. Could you um, do a, a short ID for me? I'm going to be putting this out on radio as well as uh, doing um, an editorial for it and it's going to be going out on a show called The Cutting Edge um, and if you could uh, just play around with that um, 
And so you would like me to say you're listening to The Cutting Edge or something like yeah, that? Yeah, you could say, hi, this is Adam uh, Snyder from um, Mercury Rev, and you are listening to uh, The Cutting Edge. Okay, the, the Cutting Edge, do, do you want me to give you any call letters or anything, or just The Cutting Edge? The Cutting Edge is fine. fine. Yeah, that's great. Okay, I'd be glad. Do you want me to just repeat it a couple of times in case I muff it up? Sure, you, you, as I say, you just go ahead when you're ready. Okay, I'll just, so you're recording me already, right? I am. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is going to take me like three tries, because I always get the giggles, so. No problem. <laughs> and, uh, um, <clears throat> oh, here we go. Uh, hi, this is Adam Snyder from Mercury Rev, and you're listening to The Cutting Edge. Fair enough. Okay. Is that good? That's good. No, levels are fine. Everything's great. You don't want me to try it like this? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> yes, you can do that. You can do that. <laughs> hey, this is Adam Snyder. <laughs> no, the guys that kill me, I better keep it straight. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you've got an image, you know. Come on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we do have it. We, we have, you know, we're very concerned about our image. Absolutely. If you met us, you would. You know, <laughs> a bunch of goofballs. You know? <laughs> well, as, as as long as it's fun, that's that, that's when you, that's why you do it. You know, it's, it's quite yeah. fun. No, us. we're having a blast. We are having a blast. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. I, I appreciate it. Well, time. thanks, Jason. It's been great to talk to you. Lovely, and uh, all the best uh, for the for the for nineteen ninety nine. Okay, and you too. Thank you. Okay, take care of yourself. Thanks then. Bye bye. Bye now.